Um, I'm going to go with male because yeah. it's clothes. No, we could lie. No. Oh, God, I'm not going to get this right, am I? It's a good <laughs> thing there's two of us. <laughs> you have to be very calm, still. Schister psoriasis, also known as Bilharzia, is the second most common parasitic disease in the world after malaria. It's estimated 90% of cases occur in Africa. Schistosomiasis is caused by a trematode worm that infects people who work or play in infested water. Worm larvae, which develop in the guts of freshwater snails, enter the body through the skin, where they grow, breed, and lay their eggs, triggering diarrhea, stomach pain, anemia, and stunted development in children. In 2011, 243 million people were treated for the disease which kills 200,000 a year in Africa alone. OK, so I've been given my waders, my all-in-one all suit. Um, Sheikh, what else do I need? <laughs> <laughs> Chair Tiam has been researching cystosomiasis for over 20 years. It does seem a bit odd, but we're being cautious here. But in the background, of course, the villagers, who have no option, really, in terms of using the water supply here, of course, they're completely exposed. So the contrast is quite stark. Chair is assessing the rate of infection in Lampsa, a village in one of the worst affected areas in Senegal, by examining the snails found in the local water supply. We have our first one, we have our first snail. La dernière prospection ici, on a eu à peu près 45% d'infectés ici dans le site là. Donc c'est un site vraiment infecté quoi. Some of those most at risk are the local school children. Donc euh, oh, so we're measuring it. On va mesurer deux comprimés et demi. Tu peux donner deux comprimés et demi là-bas. The most common treatment is a drug called praziquantel, but worldwide only 10% of those that need it have access to it. But it does cure them of schistosomiasis 100%. It's 100% effective. Efficace, on peut faire là, efficace le traitement. Mais le mieux, c'est de trouver, de de parer à ça quoi, de trouver une solution vraiment pour qu'il ne se réinfecte pas. Goes to give a sample now, urine sample, which Sheikh will take off into the lab after this. So next child, please. By detecting parasite eggs in urine or stool samples, Chair is comparing the rate of infection and reinfection amongst the villagers to the level of contamination of the snails in the local area. What can you see? You can tell already? That quickly? C'est des œufs de bilharziose, des œufs d'hématobium. Il y en a au moins une vingtaine sur un seul champ. Oh, it's really sad. And these aren't just samples in a lab. You know, we took them from the children earlier, we met them. And to think, you know, you can place a face with that child that's infected. On a déjà traité ces enfants-là, heureusement. Mais il y en a d'autres qui sont prêts dans le village et qui, qui sont beaucoup plus de charges ou les mêmes charges Ce sont ces enfants-là qui risquent quand même euh, de courir de graves euh, conséquences, quoi. Donc, il faut faire quelque chose au plus vite possible. And this involves going back a step by tackling the snails that carry the parasite in its larval stage. Il y en a un ici, voilà, tu regardes. You think you found euh, it? Positif, oui. Oh, God, yeah. Il est comme ça. This is human schisto. Oui. So that oui, means in the site that we were collecting from, the larvae does actually carry the schisto. So, what, what is the answer? Well, in the case, the treatment, we can say that the treatment is effective for, as you say, a curative medicine. When you treat, you have to deal with the individual of the bilharziosis. But it doesn't diminish. It returns to the river, it returns to the bilharziosis. So, 
Ce n'est pas, pas, pas un, un, comment une solution définitive et les personnes où il y a d'autres formes de lutte. The solution used to be this guy. The African freshwater prawn is the snail's main predator. And without snails to act as intermediary hosts, the parasite can't complete its life cycle. But today, the prawns are almost extinct in the Senegal River because of this. The Diama Dam was built in the 1980s to prevent salt water from flowing into agricultural lands. It blocked the prawns upriver migration, disrupting their life cycle across a huge catchment area. While the snail's major predator was disappearing and the river's salinity and habitat were changing, a massive outbreak of intestinal schistosomiasis occurred in the villages upriver from the dam. In fact, it was the fastest outbreak of any disease in recorded history. Nicolas Journard works for Projet Crevette, which is trying to reintroduce the prawns to the Senegal River Basin. I'm going to introduce you to Batch. Bonjour, je m'appelle Amandine. Amandine, c'est Batch. Ça va? Yeah. Tu veux les pêcher maintenant? Est-ce qu'on peut aller avec toi? To restore the prawn population, Nicolas needs breeding stock, and that's where local fishermen like Badge come in. So, Badge, how long have you been a fisherman? Depuis 1994. Avant le barrage, il y avait beaucoup de poissons, il y avait beaucoup de crevettes, mais maintenant, il n'y en a plus beaucoup. When Badge's father was fishing, before the dam was built, he used to catch hundreds of prawns every day. Today's haul is one fish and one prawn. So if um, Project Crevette reintroduces prawns, um, a large number of prawns, what change will that mean for you? It will be much better for us. In general, everyone will work. Everyone, all the fishers. Is there a clash between the fishermen like Baj fishing for the prawns, but Project Crevette doing so much hard work to try and to reintroduce the prawns here to fight um, schistosomiasis? Actually, no, because uh, we are using the small prawn that eat the snails in order to, to grow. And uh, Baj is inter and other fishermen are interested by fishing big prawns. But the prawns don't spread the schisto? If I eat the prawns, because I like prawns, yeah. I, I don't catch schisto. Not at all, there is no risk. Even if you eat the snakes, you will not uh, catch the disease. You can catch it only in the water, and it will go in your body through the skin. Projet Crevette plan to eventually breed the prawns in sufficient numbers to restock the river. But until then, they must fly them in from Cameroon, over 3,000 kilometers away. It's well before sunrise. I'm not usually a morning person, but this is no ordinary morning. We're the welcoming committee for the prawns. Bonjour. Hi. Bonjour. <laughs> Hello, Samaya. My name is Amandeep. Tell me what you need a hand with. Before release, all 300 new arrivals need to be sexed, measured, weighed, and separated into groups, because the project is working on which combination of prawns is best at controlling the snail population. Carapace, propodus, length, and propodus weight. Okay. Ooh, wow. Come here, around. Yeah. 32. Carapace, 32. Um, I'm going to go with male, because yeah. it's closed. No, it's large. large. Oh, God, I'm not going to get this right, am I? It's a good <laughs> thing there's two of us. <laughs> Females with eggs are not released, but taken to Project Crevette's hatchery to build a homegrown crop. So the ratio is three females to one male. Yeah. So maybe a little bit of jealousy there. Three females one male. Lucky men. <laughs> and as you can see, it's taken a long time to do this process. It was broad daylight outside. And We've got the last one. <laughs> last one to go. Merci beaucoup. Wow. Comme ça, ça va? How many boxes have we got in total? 
11? 11 boxes. And now where do we go? Uh, now we go to Lamsa village to okay. release the first bronze. Fantastic. Yeah. by Shisto. So the area we are talking about now, the Senegal River Basin, is, uh, is this approximately the size of the Italy. But uh, more generally speaking, Shisto is present all over the tropical countries, and especially in Africa, where we count 90% of the case. And uh, so it means that the research we are doing here might be applied uh, everywhere else in Africa and where we cross Shisto Poland. Yes, sir. Right, I'm gonna get busy and put my waders on while the boys figure out what's happening with the boxes. Okay. This looks very different from catching a goldfish bowl, you know, a goldfish at a fun fair. <laughs> the new prawns are released into enclosures where their progress, including their progress at munching through the local snail population, can be monitored. With your permission, shall we release? OK. Here we go. Swim to freedom. Go forth, be brave. <laughs> oh, they seem very happy. I'm honoured that you let me be part of this process. Thank you so much. And within seconds, they disappear into the murky water. Yes. <laughs> but you'll come back to monitor them. Every two days, we, we come back and we check the, the traps that are here, all around the enclosure, and check if they're still alive. And, uh, and we also check if the, they are eating the snails, we are yes. collecting the snails. The most important job that they exactly. have. Exactly. And hopefully they will be hungry and they will eat yeah, yeah. the snails. Yeah, <laughs> they are after this long travel. 